What's up guys, Joey here if you get tech here in San Francisco checking out Samsung's first flagship entry of the year, the Galaxy S20 series. Now, last year, the Galaxy S10 series was well received by both us and you guys. Now let's see if the Galaxy S20 series is just as promising. For this video, we're checking out both the standard S20 and S20 Plus. If you want to see our video on the S20 Ultra, you can watch that right here. Now, this is not the first time Samsung released three different models in one flagship series. We got the same treatment last year, except that now the E variant is now replaced by the Ultra variant. Anyway, immediate design changes from the S10 series. We still get the punch hole camera, but it now takes the center placement like on the Note 10 series and the recently launched Galaxy A71. Speaking of the Galaxy A71, we get a similar rectangular rear camera module on the upper left center of the back. And finally, I think at this point it's confirmed Samsung has killed the headphone jack for its flagships. We don't get one on any of the S20 phones. Now, phones in hand, they're exactly what you expect. Sleek, thin, almost bezel sandwiches of metal and glass with the display being the center focal point, this being Samsung after all. Checking out those displays, we got a 6.2 inch screen for the S20 and a 6.7 inch one for the S20+. Plus. They both use dynamic AMOLED panels with not just a QHD resolution, but a refresh rate of 120Hz as well. Although, you will have to bump down to Full HD to experience it. It's also got a 240Hz touch response rate, which Samsung is touting as a gaming-focused feature as it reduces the delay of your taps on the screen. And like usual, under the display, we got an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner for biometric security, and Face Unlocked is available as well. These Infinity O SAMOLED screens are really top notch, but no one's winning any awards for expecting that. Checking out the rest of the body, we get the power and volume buttons on the right side, we get the SIM card tray up top, and at the bottom, the main microphone, Type C port, and a loudspeaker. Again, missing here is the headphone jack that the S10 series had. Checking out the internal hardware, we get either the Snapdragon 865 or Exynos 990, depending on your region, and both the S20 and S20 Plus have 8GB and 12GB of RAM options. For storage, the S20 gets 128GB, while the S20 Plus has 128GB and 5 12GB options. The configurations available will vary per market. Now, while the hefty amounts of RAM and powerful chipsets will mark an incredible increase in performance, this is already expected. Samsung's focus on pushing these phones into the future is definitely 5G. All three models will be 5G ready, but there are 4G only variants that will also roll out. And for these two phones in particular, unfortunately, we're getting the 4G only models in the Philippines. But still, the implications of 5G for this phone are shaping up to be really cool so far, including Full HD video calls via Google Duo, which is now baked into One UI thanks to a partnership with Google as well as being able to play the full-fledged version of the game Forza Street thanks to their partnership with Microsoft. Rounding out the internal spec, we get a 4000mAh battery for the S20 and a 4500mAh one for the S20+. Plus. Now these huge capacities are just insane considering how thin and light these phones feel in the hand. I just wish they supported Samsung's new 45W fast charging which is reserved only for the S20 Ultra. The standard and the plus only support 25W fast charging which granted is still very fast. Aside from 5G, the other big talking point for the S20 series are the cameras. Now our time with the phones was very limited so we weren't able to get our own sample photos and videos but I'm telling you guys these phones surely have an upgraded camera department. Samsung is now pairing its computational photography in its flagships with a higher resolution sensor, which includes a 64 megapixel rear camera for the S20 and S20+. Plus. These two phones now rival even Huawei in terms of zoom capability, topping out at 30x digital zoom. We get not just 8K video recording, which is crazy, but also video in pro mode. Finally, Native Pro mode on these cameras without using an app like Filmic Pro is a solid video upgrade. Not to mention, we also got an improved Super Steady mode, which was one of my favorite features from last year. But my new favorite camera feature is Single Take mode. It uses all of the S20's cameras at the same time to take a 10 second video. It then uses AI to process the video and select the best moments and provide you with these options. 
be it the best still frame, the best part of the video, and it even generates a boomerang or applies filters. The S20 and S20 Plus also have the crazy space zoom feature, but if you want to see that in action, check out our video on the S20 Ultra. But yeah, that about wraps it up for this video on the Samsung Galaxy S20 and S20 Plus. For our initial impression, all three phones in the series are remarkable, remarkable devices. They've taken everything good from last year, added some more stuff on top, and put them all into three different packages. And while the S20 and S20 Plus are great phones, they're a bit vanilla for what the S20 series has to offer. For the complete package, you'll want to check out the S20 Ultra. We have a video on that phone already, so be sure to check it out. Anyway, so what do you guys think about the Samsung Galaxy S20 and the S20 Plus? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please do drop a like, subscribe to our channel for more content, hit the bell icon to miss future uploads, and be sure to visit ukritech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. This has been Joey, and stay hydrated. I got my water right here.